Hi Taurus, welcome back to my channel. It's Krista here to do your bi-weekly reading. So this is for April, <laughs> April 1st through the 15th. I almost forgot what date it was, um, 2020. So Taurus, this is for your sun, moon, and rising signs. It is a general brief reading for the first two weeks of the month. I hope that you're enjoying your bi-weeklies in addition to your extended monthlies. What is in store for you guys? We had this little guy jump out. You are in the process of realizing something very difficult but truthful here. So we'll see if it shows up in your reading. Nine of Swords could have kept you up at night, but it's just a realization. It's a, it's a period of um, past contemplation into uh, virtually acceptance. You're, you're on the verge of accepting something. Let's see what's in store for you. For April 1st through April 15th, messages for Taurus, April 1st through April 15th. All right, folks, let's get your six cards out. I will be polishing off your reading today with an oracle card from the medicine deck with an additional message for you. Here's another nine. Starting off strong here, guys. I don't read reversals. However, I am going to leave that there and read it, read it both ways. Um, because my deck is always upright and there's a reason it came out like that. So I will read both ways. Wow, two fives on top of each other. Okay, and the high priestess at the bottom of the deck. <sighs> Very interesting to say the least. All right, Taurus, bottom of the deck energy, the high priestess here. So some secrets, some shadow work uh, for April 1st through the 15th. You could be concealing something. Something could be concealed from you. It could feel heavy right? Um, this isn't necessarily weighting down. This isn't really heavy in the sense of it's negative, um, but it's intense and it's real. So the high priestess being the bottom of the deck energy for the first two weeks for you. And then, you know, a new beginning. We have the death card here. We have a couple of pentacles. Uh, we have this guy sort of like a little bit wonky coming out here upside down. A little bit of conflict. We did have the nine of swords jump out. I do think that this could be a reckoning period for you, a period of coming to terms with something. Um, we have to take a very close look at what it is we're comfortable with, it looks like. And I'll talk about that in detail in just a minute. Um, but it is really intense to have a major arcana for the bottom of the um, overall energy for the first two weeks for you guys. So Taurus, what is going on behind the scenes? You can probably see how intensely she's kind of looking through you here. This is a person who is not going to be very verbal. Now, Taurus, you do rule the throat, singing and speaking voice. I feel strongly here there's something not being said. We're not dealing with any swords in your reading, but we do have this sense of with that nine of swords jumping out, maybe there's nothing left to be said. Maybe you just have to come to terms with something here or accept something. But um, what are you comfortable with and why? And uh, how is that affecting other people? Could be um, a major element for you in the first two weeks of April. High Priestess, though, I mean, there's a lot of occult and esoteric energy behind this person as well. I would definitely trust your instincts. I would go within and consult your higher self at this time. And this very probably has to do with a female. This is... Um, if, you know, if this isn't your energy, you're dealing with someone with this energy, someone who is highly uh, attuned. You could be dealing with a Gnostic. You could be dealing with a healer or a shaman. Uh, High Priestess often has these gifts, whether they're aware of them or not. And um, there's a lot of moon energy as well. So this is moon energy. This is shadow work, shadow self. And um, I would even suggest a cancer individual or fourth house, something having to do with the family. So let's get into the first card. Of course, this represents the situation, right? So this is a really comfortable card, the Knight of Pentacles. This is sitting pretty. This is independent energy. This is um, feeling, you know, economically, financially, um, even, even physically comfortable, right? So you're in this position. You have a lot to be grateful for. Um, this is a great period of gratitude. This is a great period of graciousness. Um, so the situation is you have a lot to be thankful for. You've probably worked very hard for this as well, 
or you've earned this somehow. It does sit atop, I'm not looking at the position, just the card, it does sit atop the death card or a major transformation. So there, this is where I mentioned there could be some sort of like uh, shuffling or regeneration um, or even revision of this comfortable position here because we have the seven of pentacles looking directly at the death card. Um, so while you're sitting very comfortably here, there's something behind the scenes. There's something that's not being either accounted for. There's something that, that's in the shadows. Um, I'm going to suggest it's something within the mind, right? A level of acceptance just because it's no accident that the nine of swords jumped out. And while it didn't show up in your spread, I am going to relate the two nines together. Um, because there could be an element of veneer as well. There's something behind the scenes or in your mind being that nine of swords. And then what's on the surface? What are people seeing? What are you showing people, right? The situation is you're comfortable, you're confident, uh, but there's going to be um, a major transformation around this. The reason for the situation is the ace of um, wands, as you can see here. Gorgeous energy. This is possibly um, a new person, right? This is a new job, a new career, a new event. This is, generally speaking, aces are new something. Um, this could be an aha moment for you as well, but this could be a prize. Um, this could be um, instincts. Definitely willpower. You could be taking action here around uh, becoming more comfortable, becoming more um, financially independent. But certainly the reason for this is a spark of genius, right? This is a new opportunity, definitely a new opportunity. As I mentioned just a moment ago, I am reading this energy on top of the um, card beneath it. It's energy, not position, just the energy. And this is where we're looking at, you know, an opportunity, a new idea around what's been going on. Where do you really stand? What has been planted? What needs to be weeded out? Um, here's where we're looking at a really wonky situation. As I said, you've pro if you've watched me or my channel for years yet now, you'll know I don't read re reversals for no particular reason. However, when it does show up, I do take it very seriously and I will read it both ways. Um, now this is technically in your recent past and the Five of Pentacles does sit on top of the card, the Five of Wands. Fives are difficult, five are chaos, five is a lesson needs to be, we need to gather this lesson, we need to, the struggle is real and the struggle is supposed to be really helpful. And the fives, it creates a struggle. Now technically it sits in front of this, right? Technically it's your recent past and this is a lot of healing. So you've been able to heal yourself from something difficult. You've been able to ask for help. You've got yourself out of financial or uh, physical, you know, as in terms of health, you've gotten yourself out of trouble. Um, you've gotten a lot of assistance. Something has been balanced out. You feel very confident here. You feel like there might even be a new opportunity or a new way to win something here. So in that sense, it be a five of pentacles in your recent past reversed is very, is very um, I would say, very positive, right? Um, because it means that you're not currently technically in this position at all or anymore. I think the only caveat with this being reversed, however, as a five of pentacles is that the lesson isn't being learned or something isn't being looked at or you haven't asked for help. Um, because when it's upright, this is you and one other person who could be your partner or someone very close to you who is refusing to look at something. You're refusing to get to the root of something. Technically, this is going to speak to a sense of despair. This is a sense of rejection, right? Um, reversed, it would be that we're not rejected. We're not despaired. But I think it's more of a sense of you're not in that position as it's more of it could be more of a denial of it you don't want to be in that position so you won't face it and i'm really saying that more confidently than if any other card sat beneath it than a five of wands <laughs> which is conflict so it could just be i don't want to face this um, but something definitely needs to be heated here guys because sitting on top of a conflict card Something in the shadows not being addressed here is 
kind of like it's going to be figured out anyway because we have um, in the position of the now, right, of the current position is this is going to be transformed. This is technically, it is the death card. Um, it is a transformation. Something that's very, very comfortable is going to be transformed, right? Not necessarily for the worse. Um, but I do think in particular looking at the uh, bottom of the deck energy, which is a major arc, another major, okay, um, where we have underlying energy for the first two weeks and then the situation the net that you're in, something could come to light. Something is coming out of the shadows or it's not going to be buried much longer. There could be a reawakening here. There could be a reassessment or a reawakening. And I say that here because of the seven. The near future is the seven of pentacles. He was looking directly at the death card. I think you're just going to have to make a major decision about how you're about to um, apply yourself or attempt a, conf a situation regarding conflict here, guys, honestly, um, because, of course, the advice or near future, of course, this is the future, so the advice card would be, you know, your five of wands. And this is demanding, this is demanding communication, this is demanding conflict, Something could be on repeat here. Something needs to change. Something definitely needs to change. Whatever comfortable situation you're in. And um, it could be because of avoidance. It's hard to say that there isn't a veneer because there's something so specific under the surface, so deep and intuitive under the surface. And then you have all this pentacle energy and then some fire, right? You know, a major transformation. Something's never going to be the same again. And then the trans, the transformative power of fire or passion or will to power, truth, um, agency, right? Responsibility could be major themes here as well. Very interesting for you. I would prepare yourself for a little, um, little battle <laughs> here in the first two weeks of April here, guys. And it's a general matter. It could be something small. It could be something just within yourself. It could be with a coworker. Um, it could be about a financial situation. It could be an investment um, not turning out the way you want it to. We do have self-esteem here with elk. Self-esteem could be a major component for you. I went a little bit over time. Sorry, guys. Uh, Self-esteem is a major factor here, and we're seeing this with the Five of Pentacles. Most definitely, your self-esteem is going to be affected by this. This is technically upside down. I think facing something that's hidden under this, under the surface or that you're intuiting is could be difficult, that you're trying to avoid. Just face it here, guys. You're really going to be able to get over it much easier, um, and it's going to relax your, your sense of belonging and your sense of self here. So that is your reading for the first two weeks of April. I really hope that you enjoyed it and take something positive from it, Taurus. Um, if you have a second, comment below. Let me know what this reading meant for you. And if you enjoy my content, please like, share, and subscribe. Until I see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.